Okay, we're ready. Okay, hold on, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, we're recording. Hi, welcome everybody and welcome to a Dementia SA um, Tuesday webinar. Today's guest is Candice Delbort from Tenna, the Adult Incontinence product um, brand. Uh, Candice has five years experience with Tenna and she's worked very closely with clinic sisters and carers to understand what difficulties are faced within the day-to-day -day caring for a loved one. Her training and expertise helps her to understand the causes of incontinence and how each individual requires different care. They're often able um, to then find the best tenor solution and give knowledgeable advice regarding the care that one needs for one's loved one. So a big warm welcome to Candice. Thank you for taking the time to join us. And a big warm welcome to everybody who's part of the um, ever-growing Dementia South Africa family. Um, we're so happy that all of you are here. Um, Candice, I'm gonna hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Abigail, for the introduction and welcome, everybody. Um, I'm from Tenna, as, as Abigail had mentioned. I'm going to be running through just a bit of um, information. Um, as a carer or even someone who's looking after one of your loved ones at home, uh, it's very important to actually understand uh, the differences um, between having incontinence and still understanding things. But having dementia, you then also have the difficulty of um, the person not recognizing things, not knowing what's going on. So it's important to understand the relation between dementia and incontinence. So just a bit of information about SET. We are the global leader in adult incontinence. Uh, we have over 60 years experience uh, with incontinence products. So we offer you a full product range, which would be something from liners, uh, pads, to uh, pull-ups to full solutions as well as a skincare range. So I'll touch on that a bit later. Um, but just for now, you know, um, dementia is one of those things that are increasing. And the reason for that is our population is aging. People are living longer. And with that comes an aging population. Once they are reaching, well, well now they're living longer. And the problem is with that, incontinence does happen, it's a natural thing, as well as dementia, it's all a process of aging. So how we need to figure out what's happening with these people is understand the, the it's a natural course, really. It's as natural as going gray, it's as natural as an allergy. So it's a very, it's a, it is a difficult process for family members to deal with when the early stages of dementia start setting in, as well as the progression um, towards a, a more um, a more advanced form of dementia. So if the person does have dementia, it's not to say that they will become incontinent, but about 60 to 70% of people with dementia do have some form of incontinence. So it's quite important to know that it could be um, coming to that point and also to understand what's happening to the person when they do have dementia. So in the early on stages, um, what happens is they start not remembering, their brain isn't firing as quickly and things are becoming difficult for them to understand, to remember and to recognize. So what you need to do is understand now, what is the beginning stages? How do you tell? Um, small little accidents start happening. Um, they, they don't understand the feeling of needing to go to the toilet. Um, they don't understand what is that feeling. They may not even recognize the toilet. So accidents start happening. Um, and it's very important for you as a carer to <laughs> It's very important for you as, as a carer to then understand what kind of incontinence are they having. There is a few different ones. So just a brief overview. A stress incontinence would be a stress on the bladder, a pressure on the bladder. So that can be anything from standing up and down off a chair or getting in and out of bed, okay? Then there's urge incontinence, which means the person gets a sudden urge. They don't feel that buildup of their bladder becoming full. Um, so what happens is they feel the urge, but they maybe can't get to the toilet in time and then they have the accident. Um, so it's another involuntary loss of urine. <clears throat> then we also have um, uh, something like a functional, one, which means the person is unable to get to the toilet. This could be because they are walking on a walking aid or their path to the toilet is blocked. That would lead to an accident, not to say that they are necessarily 
incontinent. <clears throat> then you also get uh, nocturia, which is a more frequent urination in the evenings. So they might not need a product during the day, but they may need one in the evening to then help with all the toilet, going to the toilet so much in the evening. Um, we also have a mixed form where it could be one or two or three of the different ones that are happening. So it's not to say that because a person is having an occasional accident or because of any of those reasons that they do need a full solution, which uh, translates to a diaper. Um, they will have different needs. And I think this is where you as a carer would need to understand what kind of problem is it? Is it because when they're getting in and out of bed? Um, is it because they can't get to the toilet? What is happening in that individual's life is what will help you to determine which product they would need. So they might just need a pad, but they could also need a pull-up. They could also need a full diaper. So there's a lot of aspects to take into consideration when you are choosing the product for um, your loved one. So to begin with, for example, a pull-up, these are for people who are still mobile. So it's like an underwear. They can actually pull it on and off, up and down themselves every time they go to the loo, if they are still able to. That can be there as a safety net to say, okay, there are occasional accidents, but to not become reliant on it. We still encourage that the person goes to the toilet and actually uses the toilet as often as possible to still exercise the bladder. So the bladder is a muscle it does need to be exercised, bladder will become weaker if it's not exercised. If the person is becoming too reliant on having that nappy there, it will progress. So what we actually need to do is encourage them to go to the toilet if they are still mobile. Um, and if they aren't, so perhaps if they're in a wheelchair, um, if they're bedridden, something like a full solution, uh, like a, a diaper, we call it a slip, um, that would be the best option for someone that you are caring for who is immobile. Um, that would be because incontinence can be a form of urinary loss. It can also be a form of bowel loss. And if a person is completely immobile, um, you would need a full solution, which is the, the slip, to then protect the person against both. Whereas something like a pad or a pull-up would more be for urinary accidents. Okay. So also to, to understand... Um, how you as a carer can help them, they may not understand what's happening. They start progressing into a more advanced form of dementia. They're not understanding what is this around them? What is this on them? It could also lead to them pulling the product off or taking it off and then having an accident. You know, So you have to also keep in mind that they don't understand. So always be patient with them. Um, try and explain to them slowly why that's there. You know? um, and also with these sort of things, incontinence, when they are using a product, whether it be a pad, a pull-up, or a diaper, the problem is there is always the risk of a urinary tract infection. And the reason being, if the product's not absorbing properly, that urine then sits on the pad or in the pants or in the diaper, and that bacteria has then exposure to the, to the um, urinary tract. And what happens is that then leads to a UTI. So what we need to do is always, always ensure that the product is changed the moment it is full or saturated is what we call it. Once that product is full, it needs to be changed. If you can see it's full, the best thing to do is change it immediately, not to maybe hope that, you know, okay, maybe one more, one more um, toilet use. It's not going to be able to, to absolutely absorb that product, uh, that urine. The product becomes over full and the urine actually sits on the product. So what ends up happening? Exposed. Um, extra exposure to the moisture, the bacteria, it becomes a breeding ground for a urinary tract infection, as well as skin irritations um, and infections. So we always need to change that product. There always needs to be a good cleaning schedule that happens. And soap and water is not actually good for the person, especially an elderly person's skin. Um, their skin becomes much weaker and much more fragile. It also takes longer to heal once they've got a skin irritation or a problem, for example. So always to, soap can be harsh. There are other solutions that I will present to you later, like a no water wash cream, uh, wet wipes, just to make sure that that person is clean at all times between changes, okay? So other tips to prevent your UTIs is making sure the person is properly um, hydrated as well. So you can actually see when a person is becoming more dehydrated, they start feeling terrible. They start, you know, so always look out for signs of dehydration 
Are they getting enough fluid? And when it is fluid, what kinds of fluid? Okay, because this also impacts um, how often the person needs to go to the toilet. It also impacts um, if you're using, if you're giving them stuff like fruit juice, caffeine, anything like that actually acts as a diuretic and it, it actually brings on more frequent use of the toilet. So to understand that that's a diuretic, um, to rather give them pure forms of, of um, hydration like water, um, maybe some teas, but nothing before bedtime and always try and limit it to two hours before bedtime that they have their last drink. So this will ensure that the product works throughout the night into the morning. Okay. Um, so with regards to other problems in terms of skin irritations, um, like I've said, the prolonged exposure to, to moisture, it's important to always remember that uh, once the product is full, it's no longer going to work. So there has to be a change that's done. Um, also ensuring that you've got the right absorbency. And this is actually very important to take into, into mind. Um, some people may not need a pull-up or a diaper, they may just need a pad, and that's an accident where some of the, the urine uh, is lost, but it's not um, completely, the whole bladder is completely expelled. So if there is a full loss of the bladder, something like a pull-up or a diaper would be your option. As I said, if the person is mobile, um, if they can still pull up and pull down their, like, like an underwear, they can use a pants. Um, so it's nice to still keep them mobile, to still keep them active. This also helps with sleeping routines, you know, and it helps with the blood and the bowel movements to keep them healthy and active if possible. Um, where a person is more um, immobile, where they are bedridden or confined to a bed or wheelchair, um, it's also important, especially to change them before bedtime. Um, just to make sure that you've got a nice, clean, um, new product on before they go to bed and then limiting um, any kind of uh, fluid intakes to two hours before bedtime. <clears throat> so skin related issues, I mean, also it's, it's once again, if the product is not absorbing properly, if the product becomes too oversaturated, you may need to look at the next one up. You may need to then understand why is this one becoming oversaturated? Why is it not working? And that's really got to do with the absorbency and the type of product, which is why I'm trying to give you guidance on how to understand which product a person will need. Um, so the slip is the highest absorbency. So um, that will last right through the night, especially if a person can't get out of bed to go to the loo in the night. If they need assistance, it's very important to assist them, um, especially with regards to um, trying to help them and assist them to still use the toilet as much as possible if they are mobile. Um, and with regards to going to bed, make sure they go to bed with a nice clean, um, they, they clean and the product is, is um, a brand new product to last through the night. Um, if you can assist them during the night to the toilet, that's also advised because the thing is with dementia, if the path is not lit properly to the bathroom, um, if there's obstacles in their way, you've then got a risk of falling. Um, people can't recognize, especially in the more advanced stages of dementia, they may not even recognize the toilet itself. So for them to get there themselves, it could be a very um, traumatic experience for them. They may think that this dark room, they don't know what is in there and they could become afraid of the toilet. And that's also something that we don't want to encourage is it then builds up um, that expectation every time they have to go, they get scared of it. So try and keep the whole path to the toilet lit. Um, try and keep um, <clears throat> everything that could pose as a falling hazard keep that out the way, keep it clear for them and encourage them before bed if they can walk to the bathroom to go. Um, so that's the difference between the mobile and immobile solutions. Um, so the pull-ups you can pull on and pull off and when it's used, you then change it. But bathroom, frequent bathroom habits, if we can, is, is great. Um, <clears throat> and then with regards to um, our teen range, this would be the example of your slip. So as you can see there, it's a diaper. I will be giving some more information on how to fit them. So the slip is an example of what you would use for someone who's immobile. And the pull-ups, the pants, is something that you will use for someone who is still mobile, who can maybe walk with a walking aid. Um, and these products, something like a slip, obviously needs a carer to put it on. Um, and there's some important things to remember also when putting these products on that I can help you from my side, which will help the product to be more effective. Okay, so just a quick one on the pull-ups. 
And these are your unisex pull-ups. Our pro skin range is all the blue packs. It's unisex, so this is for male or female. And it's a little, it's nice and stretchy. And then you have got your, your leg, which comes right up to the top. It fits nicely onto the, around the legs. It's a very nice secure fit. And as you can see, pull up, pull on as needed. If they can still go to the bathroom between, um, we'll say an accident, if an accident had to occur. So as I've mentioned, it's very important to understand if the person needs a full-time solution like the slip or whether they can still use a pants, which feels like underwear for them. And it actually makes them more comfortable in terms of, okay, this feels like an underwear. I can pull it on, I can pull it up. And it, they, they feel more comfortable with that. Whereas uh, someone who's immobile would need a carer to then also put on um, a slip, for example. So as an example of our slip, <clears throat> this is your diaper solution. And what happens is when you take it out the packet, it's flat. Okay, so if if you apply it like this, what happens is the urine just runs, can run off the side and it can cause leakages. So always pull out the sides and this flat part, you actually need to make a bowl. So you can fold the product and you can make a bowl. Okay, so this then helps it to become more body shaped instead of flat from the packet. So once you've got the bowl, it's then ready to be fitted. Okay, so that's a nice fitting tip. In, you can see how I've halved it and how it creates the, the bowl. This then can be fitted and the tabs come out on the sides and you can fit the product. And always make sure you've opened everything up and you are ready to use the product from there. That then can be put underneath the person for ready. Okay. One of the benefits, especially for carers and for family members who are looking after a loved one, is time. And I know that time is, it's very time consuming to look after someone, especially with regards to their cleaning processes and their changing processes as well. What's very convenient on the Tina brand is that we have a little yellow stripe here. Okay. And once that is full, it actually turns blue. The solid line will turn blue. So if it's only been absorbed here, that part will turn blue. And the further it is absorbed, so it will turn blue. So all you actually need to do is pop, lift up the blanket, see what's happening. Okay, the stripe is now fully blue. I can now take this product off and change it. If you see that it's still yellow, there's still quite a bit of yellow, it is not full. So you don't need to worry about having to check every time. You can actually just go according to what the yellow stripe is showing on the outside. It's very beneficial for time saving as well. And also to not waste the product because often what happens is you think it might be full, you take it off, you realize, oh no, it's still actually not, not full now, it's wasted. And the problem with that too is having the sticker tabs on the sides, which you actually will stick on once you pull that off, the problem is you can't stick it back. So a nice feature of ours is that um, we have little, our tabs are reusable, so you can stick it on and off. Okay, so that's quite nice. And the thing with the people with dementia is they often don't know what is this that's around their waist. They start fiddling with the tabs, they start pulling things off. Um, and then the product is then, you may have only just put it on five minutes ago, and now it's been pulled off because the person doesn't understand what this thing is around them. So they take it off. Um, so that also leads to more wastage of the product. Um, so with this, our reusable tabs, you can actually stick it on and off as many times as possible. Um, but another solution for that could be our Flex product. And our Flex product actually comes with, it's almost like a, a Velcro-like, okay? So this is the front where you would attach it. And at the back, you pull out the, uh, it's a belted product. We call it a belted brief. So what this does is it acts as a belt, okay? So you wrap the belt around the person's waist like that, and you bring the front of the product up and attach it just onto the belt, and there's your solution. So with this, it can also be taken on and off, but this belt, and this is where it comes in handy for dementia patients, is you can actually switch the product around and put this around the back side of them so there will be nothing in front for them to pull off. Okay. And the same applies with our yellow stripe with the wetness indicator, as well as to make the bowl when fitting these products. And then just with regards to cleaning, and I know this is probably one of the things that become very labor intensive for carers, 
um, is if someone is immobile um, and in bed or in a wheelchair, the process of cleaning and especially cleaning between changes of, a, of an incontinent solution can become very intensive on the body, on the back. And we understand that, um, you know, and we understand that it is time consuming as well. So having to carry a bucket, bucket of water every time you want to change or every time you want to clean or doing a bed bath or a bed wipe down, even just taking the person, person to the shower and sitting them in their shower chairs. It's all very labor intensive and it's not always necessary to be done every single day. Um, so what we've got in our product range is a no water wash cream and no wet wipes, okay? So these two products go hand in hand. You can, instead of having to carry soap and water every time and especially doing this multiple times in a day between changes, that's also very labor intensive. So you can use our wash cream, it doesn't require any water. So what you will do is you'll use, the, use a wipe or a cloth to wipe it on, clean the person and then use a wet wipe, which is really nice because it's a nice adult size. And those wet wipes will then, um, you just wipe it off and put the new product on and there they're all clean. It's as easy as the wash cream on, wipe off with the wipes. Okay, so it's very, very nice to use. It can be used on the whole body. Therefore, underarms, other intimate areas, the whole body can actually have a nice wipe down with that product. Um, there's, no, there's no heavy things in there like alcohol. It is made for an adult's pH. So when people are using baby products uh, like baby wipes, what they don't understand is that the baby wipes, the pH is meant for a baby skin, which is completely different to an adult skin. Even though it says mild on there, you have to remember the pH balance is what's going to change that. Um, it's not going to be good for an adult skin. It can actually dry out the skin. And dry skin is also not a good thing when they are using an incontinence product. So with ours, it's alcohol free. It's meant for an adult. It's got a nice size to it for all over care. Um, it's also very durable. And it's, it's meant to cleanse. It also protects the skin because it has um, glycerin um, in it, which helps as a barrier as well. And it protects and moisturizes the skin. So you've got a three in one there with that one. And it's quite nice to use between changes as well as on days when you don't have to do a bath every single day or a shower or a bed bath. You can alternatively use something like that to, um, to do on every other day or in between changes. Um, and yeah, I think that helps with cares. It helps save time. It also helps save money from the products being wasted. Um, strain on the back, especially when doing bed bars, carrying, lifting, anything like that can be very strenuous on a person. So our pro skin range is actually meant to help with carers, especially, um, and to help those understand, you know, this is what we would suggest within, um, within our uh, range in order to help better, you know, we understand that the, the products get pulled off, which is why we've got the solution of the flex, which can also be turned around to avoid that happening. So there's a lot in our range and I'm happy to take some questions as well now. And if there's anything that you would like to know from me, I think um, Abigail has got some questions she would like me to answer. Thank you, Candice. Thank you so much for that. Let me just put my video, sorry, give me a second. Going on here, hold on. There we go. Hi. Sorry about that. Can you see me? Yes. Cool. Great. Um, thank you so much, Candice. So we've got a few questions from our side, and I think I'll just read them out. Um, and if you can answer them, and then if there are any more after that, we can maybe open the floor. Um, sure. <clears throat> perfect. So thank you to everybody who took the time to send some questions in. Um, so one of the questions, Candice, is are there products, especially the uh, the underwear type, that are that are more biodegradable or reusable? So <clears throat> this is actually um, something that we're very aware of. Um, we understand that sustainability and especially the world becoming more uh, conscious about sustainable options. Um, I can't speak for other brands, but I know for us, we have recognized this problem. Um, I don't know of anything that's reusable as yet. Um, but I do know that, you know, I can speak on Tena's behalf and say that we are recognizing that sustainability and especially recyclables and that sort of thing, things becoming more biodegradable. Um, our products, our packaging on the outside, currently it's 68% recyclable and we are working towards that becoming 100%. 
There are specific ingredients that we use within our products, which are biodegradable because they come from natural sources, um, as well as um, our products on plastic based. So normally you would hear a crinkle on a product. Ours don't have that. Okay, so the, we're trying to reduce the use of a plastic based product. Ours is all more of a breathable material. Um, we also sustain, uh, we also find our resources from very sustainable um, and renewable sources, which means that we are very conscious of um, how we are impacting the, the world and our carbon footprint. Um, and Ten is actually an imported brand. We get it, so South Africa gets it from the Europe um, side of the world. And in Europe, we are already moving all of our factories over as of this year to 100% renewable energy sources. Um, so we are very aware and very conscious of our global carbon footprint, uh, where we are looking at our sustainability levels. How can we improve? Where can we improve on our, on our products that are recyclable as well? So I think um, you can even find more information about it on uh, tena.coza. We've got a whole story on our sustainability and our missions that we've been accomplishing for the last few years, as well as what we plan to do in quite a, in a lot of years forward as well. I'm on mute. Okay, terrific. Thank mm -hmm. you for that, Candice. Um, so the next question is, is it possible that kind of the use of the incontinence product over time is going to add to a patient's uh, loss of muscle control with their bladder? I think, uh, I guess for this is me paraphrasing, kind of, is it creating like a lazy bladder? So... To give you a bit of insight to the bladder itself, it is a muscle, just like any other muscle in our body. And what happens over time, as your muscles do, they become weaker, especially if they are not exercised. They become even more, the, the rate of that happening becomes much more accelerated. So what we always encourage is to try and get these people to the toilet if possible, if they are mobile, as often as possible, we encourage that. And um, it's the only way to still um, exercise the bladder you know there's also the kegel exercises which can assist in re-strengthening the bladder um, it may not be especially in the elderly it will not get back to its previous former self uh, and that would be because of aging it's a natural process like i said earlier the gray hair as much it's it's a natural aging process just like wrinkles and gray hair so it is um something that is expected um, but becoming reliant on a product when you actually don't need a full-time product, that can also be, it can contribute, yes, to, to uh, making the bladder more lazy. So this is why we are saying understand the person's needs individually. Um, if they don't need a pull-up or they don't need a diaper, rather encourage them to use a pad or if it's a pull-up because that way they are still able to get to the toilet in time um, and encourage it and help them and assist them and also looking at um, you know why is this person having these accidents is it something we can avoid maybe they actually don't need a product a lot of times you'll find that what happens is it's used as a an ease because now they think okay one or two accidents happen but they're happening frequently if you look at the person's environment um, how, what is their path to the toilet? And I think this is one of the most important things, especially in the early onset of dementia, is to understand what is their path to the toilet. Let's see if it's dark, you know, let's make sure there's always light. What are the obstacles they could be facing in the way, which means that it's reducing the time that they can get to the loo. Um, if it's something that you can do like a portable um, in the room, which may be easier for them because then it's right there, you know. So look at these sort of things and see if the accidents start happening less frequently because um, all of these things, loss of mobility, um, they don't understand, you know. So it's it's a, a good way to actually assess what's what is their environment, when are the product, when are the accidents happening, do they actually need a full time product, or is it something that they can use at you know, just in case of accidents, while you are still encouraging them to get to the loo, that is our number one point to always mention. Um, if they are, for example, it's a complete involuntary loss of the bladder and it's the full bladder, or it's bowels and bladder, you would then need a full solution. Um, if the person no longer has control over any of that, then obviously it's already at that point. Um, so I think you're yeah, looking at a full solution then only. Um, I think that's that's the way forward, but mostly always assessing, understand and trying to understand what they are going through or what's causing the problems before just moving straight on 
straight to a diaper. So always assess. And now that you've got a bit of information as to the progressions or the steps and the differences between the mobile and immobile, um, maybe you could also do an assessment in your home or, or in your place of care. And to understand, you know, is this happening often enough to, to warrant them using a full solution? Or is it something where it can just be there as more, more of a safety net, but they can still go to the loo as often as possible to still exercise the bladder? Okay, great. Thank you. That's, I mean, that makes absolute sense. It's a, it's not a, it's not a one size fits all solution. It's something exactly. that actually, a exactly. little bit, yeah, you really have to kind of look at the person and their needs. Um, and I guess that goes the same I mean, to any kind of treatment plan, you know, that's a, yeah, it's kind of reevaluating at every stage. And um, so the last question that I have sent in is, um, how does one broach the subject of incontinence with a person living with dementia to ensure that it's respectful and not childlike? So I think no matter what, whether the person's got dementia or not, um, it is a difficult subject to approach. Um, you know, one thing I can say on my side is that, you know, the stats show quite alarming numbers. One in four women in South Africa from the age of 35 will start experiencing some form, even if it's just from a cough or sneeze. One in eight men from the age of 40. Let's also remember that there are other medical factors that can also bring in this, um, uh, uh, even a temporary form of incontinence, but maybe something that's going to progress or not progress, it can only stay at one stage, it, you know, it's really going to depend on the person. So that's why I'm giving such a broad casting of the net here. Um, for men, it's very prevalent in those who've had prostate problems. Um, <clears throat> something like um, uh, diabetes can also bring it on more frequently. Um, other problems, women mainly, there's quite a few reasons, um, being pregnant, stretch, the stretching of the bladder. <clears throat> so there are other medical conditions. If a product or uh, a medication is causing um, a lot of constipation in, in the person, constipation can also be something that leads to incontinence because those two parts of the body are very closely um, uh, wound together. So what happens is the person is struggling with incontinence, uh, with constipation, um, they will most likely have a form of incontinence as well. So always try and keep their balanced diets, fruit, uh, fruits, vegetables, fibers, understand their, their um, liquid intakes as well. And I think, you know, understanding all of this in the background, and then when approaching the person to say to them, you know, you're not going to tell them now to go into a full diaper if it's not necessary, because that can be quite a lot to take in straight away. Um, so understand, you know, maybe they will only need a pad. And our pads really don't, um, they don't look too daunting. This is our maxi pad. Okay, so it's, it's really, it's really quite a comfortable conversation. It fits within the panty line. Um, and we've got one for the night time, which has just got a bit of a wider back. That's our maxi night. So and for men, it could be something as simple as our protector shield. So there's really, there's really a point of people always associate incontinence with diapers. They think that that's where they need to go straight off the bat. And that's not the case. Um, if you've evaluated their situation, if you've uh, looked at um, how much urine, how often, and why, those are the three things you need to ask yourself in order to understand which part of the spectrum do they need to fit into? Is it a pad? Is it a pull-up? Is it a diaper? So always try and understand that when you're having the conversation with the person, ensure them that it's as natural as going gray. It's a natural part of life. It's a natural part of the process um, in aging. So it's, it's normal. And always ensure them that it's normal. Um, and I think one of the main things is to make them feel comfortable. You know, We don't call it a diaper or a nappy for a reason. <clears throat> we would call it a solution. It makes, it makes people feel more comfortable when you're approaching them with it. So what they're probably experiencing is this anxiety and embarrassment every time they have an accident. And what that leads to is a person becoming much more withdrawn and much more reserved. And especially for someone with dementia who it can make them uncomfortable and, and anxious and 
they don't understand what's happening. So to, um, to try and understand what they might be feeling, um, if they know what's happening, they might become very withdrawn because they don't want to go into public. They don't want to go for their morning walks because they are scared to have an accident. Mm -hmm. So ensure them that this is just a solution for them so that they can still go out and have a good life. We want people to live happier, fuller, um, fuller lives. And that's one of our missions at SOT um, and Tennis to always keep that in mind that we we offer a full range of solutions mm. and always call it a solution you know and call it a pants and call it a pull up um call it the underwear so especially when you say don't worry about your panty yes the pull up and the same for the men as well um we do have some products which are very nice in terms of they look like underwear so our blue blue pull-ups for men so they're the same as our white pull-ups just blue um, and they're actually meant for the male anatomy, so they fit quite nicely to the male's body. And we've got the little beige ones for the ladies as well. It's even got a little label in the back, which shows them this is the back. So it's also really, it looks like underwear for them. So just to show them, you know, it's not something that's to be ashamed of. It's easy enough, it looks like your undies, and no one will be able to see that you are wearing something like this, but you'll still be able to go out and have a full life and go and have your walks in the morning and go and sit in the garden, you know, go to the eating room with everyone else and enjoy your lunch without having that um, fear of having an accident in public as well. Um, thank you, Candice. That's great. That's great to, to know. And um, tell me, so another question that's come in, does Tena have an online shop? Um, and are the prices, if you do, are the prices the same as in a normal shop? So we do have an online shop. <clears throat> if you go onto our Tina page or Tina web shop is what we call it. So you can just Google Tina web shop um, and you'll find all the products are there. Okay, so we do like it's an online paying system. Um, you can then get delivered to your door, which is also nice because then you don't have to go out into the shops. You can and you buy in cases, which is nice because you get a, like a bulk discount really. It is a lot more effective. Um, to buy like that, especially if you're having to buy a lot um, frequently. And it's money, you know, money every time you think, okay, this place is now on special, but now that place is on special. Um, the pricing always varies, you know. So if you're wanting to budget nicely, you can go onto our web, web shop. We also do from time to time have um, specials. So even with, um, you know, whenever there's a month of Black Women's Month, we'll maybe do something for the women. Um, you know, we have, we do run our online specials on there and you can order from there. It's very easy to do. Okay, that's great. That's so good. That's terrific to know. So that's uh, tina.co.za. Yeah, and then you can also just Google Tina Web Shop and that will come up for you yeah. as well. Okay, great. So I'm going to open it up to the floor. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, maybe if you want to just raise your hand or if you want to type them um, in, I can call on you. If anyone has any questions specific, um, while we while we kind of wait for uh, people to to raise their hands, um, something's just come in on on um, a private chat. Is disposing of these products, kind of once they've been used, what? Sorry, can you repeat that? Disposing of the products once they've been used. So once yes. the products have been used, how what is the best way to dispose of them? So the best way would to be. Um, the same tabs that you've used to fasten it around the body, um, just roll the product up and fasten that as well. And then we always discard in, if you can, in a little plastic bag, if there's also bowel movements, um, that's just to keep everything from, from smelling around, um, especially if, there's, if it's a home, perhaps if it's going into one place. So just to maybe keep them in a little plastic or something that you can use. You get biodegradable bags as well, which you can put it into, which is quite nice because it helps the temporary problem of having um, quite a lot of them all at once in, in a home perhaps. Um, so yeah, just you can dispose as normal. I think um, it's always a matter of where do we throw it? What do we do with it? Especially if you're new to it. So just roll it up, keep it neat and tidy and just make sure that the contents can't be, um, especially with the bowel movement, that those product, the contents in them actually can't be um, perhaps moved around in the bin or because, you know, the bins often fall around or so, yeah, just make sure everything is, is um, closed up nicely within the solution. Okay, terrific. Um, I'm just looking on... Um, so if anyone has any, any further questions that they, that they would like to ask, 
Um, I think even if you have a personal experience that you aren't sure how to handle, um, perhaps someone is acting out um, and you're not sure why, um, we can also discuss could it be because of um, they're feeling pain, they can't understand the pain. Um, the same goes with something like a urinary tract infection. It's very difficult for them to communicate what's happening. Um, they could become very anxious, very withdrawn. They could have um, irritated looks on their face, always pay attention to like facial expressions. Mm -hmm. If you're dealing with sudden outbursts, um, which are not normally like their normal behavioral patterns, um, maybe we can discuss, you know, if you're not sure, if, are you using the right product? If you'd like to reach out, I can give you advice. Okay, um, I, so another question has just come in, is if somebody does develop a urinary tract infection, is it then safe to continue using the products if they, so that their urinary tract infection is being treated? So the difficulty with the urinary tract infection, especially in later developed stages of dementia, is that they are not able to communicate what's happening. Um, they may express pain or discomfort in their facial expressions, as I said, which is a sign to look out that they are feeling uncomfortable when they're going to the loo. Um, if they're also able to communicate, um, you know, they might be feeling pain in their pelvis and their lower back. So always look out for that. And I think when it comes to um, that is quite important to treat immediately or as soon as possible. The problem is once they've got it, it could actually it can travel further up the urinary tract. It could develop into a kidney infection. Um, so always pay attention. You'll find that the urine becomes very much more concentrated and dark. You'll even maybe find tinges of blood within the within the product, the solution where they have used it, um, even if they're struggling to, to communicate it. So the main thing is when they already have it, it is a bit too late. Um, you can still keep using the product, yes, but it needs to be treated. The, the UTI needs to be treated effectively. Um, mm. If it's gotten to a point where there's blood, if it's gotten to a point to even sometimes find pus in, in the um, solution along with the urine, that is already at a far stage. Okay, so always look for how dark the urine is. What else are you seeing in the, in the, in the um, solution? that will tell you the progression of the, of the urinary tract infection. So if you've already, if it's already at that point, it is gonna need medication that would come from a doctor. Um, it's a bacteria, it needs to be destroyed. If not, it will travel further. It will go further into um, things like kidney infections. And that could actually end up in hospitalization. The, part, the problem with that is also, it's very mistaken for flu-like flu -like sy symptoms. Um, and they're they're because they, be, they become ill, they become sick. So always try and catch a UTI before it gets to that point. Um, and always just the, the tips to avoid a UTI is make sure the product is suited to that person's individual needs. Um, if the product is becoming oversaturated, understand why. Is it being left on too long? Um, has the bowl been made? Has it been fitted properly? Is it the correct size? And that's also very important. Um, if you are measuring the person's waist, that's the smallest part of the body. If you are measuring their hips, that will be the widest part of the body. And mm. what the product needs to fit around the hips. Okay, it doesn't, it goes up to the belly button, but it does not need to go higher. So the hips is the measurement. And you'll find on products, there'll always be a measurement guide. So understand, mm. are you using the right size? Because if you are using a size large on a person who's actually a medium, then, you know, you think it will leave, you can leave it on for longer, you know, but the problem is that's prolonged exposure to bacteria and urine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not to say that it's, if it's bigger, it's going to last longer. And I think often that is um, misconstrued in these sort of things. Um, the size is so important and mm -hmm. so important to get the right size so that it's a proper fit to the body. Once it's saturated, once mm -hmm. it's full, it needs to be changed. And um, that's one way to really avoid um, leading to UTIs. And I think it's a very common problem where, um, especially if one size fits all is the kind of thing, and if it's bigger, it absorbs more. I can assure you that's not the case with Tina. Our products are the same absorbency. We use the same core products. We use the same um, basis, which is SAP. Mm -hmm. um, it, it locks in the moisture, turns to a gel. So if the person, no matter what size they are, if they're using that um, specific, like a slip or a pants, it's mm -hmm. all the same absorbency what's the difference is having the correct size 
Okay, so always try and avoid a product becoming too big um, or too big for the person, becoming too oversaturated. How are you cleaning them? Are you cleaning them properly before? So all these factors will play a part in, in the problem leading up to a UTI. So if it's already there, it is too late. It can't worsen in terms of if you are continuing use of the product, it's already there. So you can still continue to use the product, but ensure that you treat that person if it's gotten to a stage where it's already um, there's a bit of blood and it's, you can see it's already there, immediately try and fix that with a medication of sorts um, and, and get it and analyze how far has it gone, you know, because um, a kidney infection could actually prevent vomiting. It could be, you know, these sort mm -hmm. of things that could be mistaken as, as something else. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Candice. And I think so often on these webinars and in our support groups, we the UTI comes up as kind of a real big indicator of irritability and, and sometimes a, aggression that is uh, yeah, hard to explain. Um, so another question that has just come in is that are there solutions past solutions that are kind of on the body? Like, do you have bed based solutions? What is your kind of what what do you suggest with regards to if one wanted the, some extra protection on the bed? On the bed. Um, well, first of all, I mean, you, you can get a linen saver, but once again, it's another product that you have to buy and it's another thing that needs to be thrown away. Um, and I can assure you that if you've got a product that's got the right absorbency, that's got the right size, you shouldn't be experiencing leaks. And if it's being changed properly, um, mm. you shouldn't be experiencing too many leaks, but you can sort of get a waterproof bed sheeting, which you can leave on the bed uh, um, until maybe an accident occurs. Um, but I, I think with the right sort of um, advice on what products to use and how to fit them correctly, these sort of things can often be um, avoided in terms of um, accidents happening where the, where the bedding is now also wet because that then leads to having to wash the bedding, change the bedding, move the person. Um, mm -hmm. So I think with regards to following the advice on how to fit properly, how to choose the correct product. You know, if there are frequent leaks, um, mm. accidents happening where the bedding is becoming wet, maybe look deeper into it. Why do you think maybe the product, measure the hips, see that they've got the right size on. Because yeah. if the product is big, it's going to leave gaps around the legs. It's going to leave gaps around the hips. And especially then it does leave room for leakage. So that's why I'm saying measure the hips. Um, always make sure you've got the right absorbency and the right product for that person and the right measurements and make sure it's fitted correctly. It should be a nice snug fit, um, sort of in the groin. It should be a nice snug fit around the around the, the buttocks. And I guess that's also a, a, a kind of a moving target, right? Because as somebody possibly becomes uh, bedridden or possibly kind of moves into a next stage of their illness, they may their size may change. They may not be the same physique, have the same physique as they once had. A, um, 100%. Um, and what I wanted to ask you, um, cause I think, um, we're coming, we're slowly coming to the, um, to the end of the session, unless anyone would like to ask any more questions, but I wanted to ask, would, if anybody kind of has questions that they'd like to ask you, um, are you comfortable with kind of people making contact with you just around, um, kind of you know, if they have any questions that maybe they didn't ask or if they have any questions around the tennis solution. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you have my ACT email address, which you're welcome to share with people if they, I know okay. it's also sometimes a very uh, touchy, something you don't really want to share or talk about. If you feel more comfortable to communicate with me directly, I'm happy. I can assess the situation with you. I can assist you. And we can find the right solution for your loved one because as we've mentioned, there are so many different factors that come into what the right product is. And we're always happy to give advice in that regard. So I'm going to post um, Candice's uh, email as well as the, um, as well as the website. I think that could be quite helpful, Candice, um, yep. for everyone. I just want to get that. Um, so your email again, for those who are writing down, it's candice.sat. Uh, Excuse me, no, Candice, Candice. Candice, Candice Delport at, at SAT.com. And um, the SAT website is www.SAT.com. And SAT is the kind of the mother company, right? Yes, we do have other products, but our direct website uh, to Tena is www.tena.co.za. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to paste this here for everybody.
there we go sorry that looks a bit i don't know if everybody's got that okay great um can i think the SAT one the SAT one isn't going to take them directly to the tenor oh, page okay. so www.tenor.co.za yeah yeah especially yeah. if you want to find your way to the web shop from there as well perfect and then candace's email is there for everybody um, Candice, a huge thank you from us. Our executive director, uh, Karen Barakovitz, is on um, dementia, so has recently, recently become CETO accredited as a training service provider for oh, people wow, with that's carers. Yeah, it's where we have a, we're um, accredited with the unit standard in frail care. Um, so we're really excited about that. So her and a colleague of ours, Mignon, are off doing their, um, their assessors training. So that's really that's exciting. Amazing. But Karen said for me to say thank you so much for your time. And um, and thank you to everybody who's joined us. You, um, you will make such a difference to our community. And we're so grateful to all of you. Um, and Candice, yeah, just a, just a really big thank you for your time. We really, really appreciate it. You were wonderful. Thank you for having me, everyone. And really reach out if you can. I encourage it. We're here to help. We're here to make people's lives better and, and encourage their quality of life. So please do feel free to reach out. Abigail, Dementia SA, thank you so much for having me. It was a wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Candice. I'm going to stop the recording.